Hey guys, Tom Mobile back again. Today I'm going to do a follow-up video of my Z Fold 3 review. If you haven't already, please check out my two weeks review below. I will link it in the description and you'll see it at the end of this video as well. First of all, I would like to thank everyone for your support over the last year. I finally reached the 1000 subscriber threshold and we'll continue to put out quality videos. So we'll look forward to doing that. And I will continue to give you guys my perspective from an average consumer. And without wasting any more time, let's jump right into it. So I decided to bring my Galaxy Z Fold 3 on a road trip to the Grand Canyon, starting from the LA area. And just wanted to share you my experience using the phone and let you know how feasible it is to bring it on a vacation and use it on a day-to-day -day basis. I was debating whether to bring this phone or the Z Flip 3 or actually both, but I elected to just bring the Z Fold 3 on the trip. I didn't want to have to carry two different phones and deal with all that extra maintenance and extra weight if I didn't need to while traveling. Traveling is stressful enough as is in terms of packing, remember you have everything, remember to bring everything back. So I decided to only bring the Z Fold 3 on the road. But essentially, from my experience using the Z Fold 3 and also the Z Flip, you're basically paying $800 more with the Z Fold 3 to get an extra screen in the front and also a large tablet size display when you open it up. The Z Flip 3 is a very nice phone. It looks very sleek, but once you open it up and using it, it's just like any other rectangular smartphone. So there's really nothing too special there if you're using it. It's just when you put it away, it's nice to have the ability to kind of close it up and then just put it away. Easier to store and walk around and take up less space. So that's the nice part of it. And if I were to be on a plane for six hours, I would prefer to have a, a tablet size full screen for entertainment and do some light gaming. I figure that's going to be a better experience than just using a regular smartphone. Photos look great in the morning. Here's a picture of the In-N-Out burger. One of the first places we ate when we land. We don't have In-N-Out in the East Coast, so definitely was excited to try this once we got to our destination. In general, the phone is a little bit bulky and difficult to carry around. If you're wearing shorts, you have to be careful getting in and out of the car because it can slip out of your pocket, especially if you are wearing basketball shorts. In terms of videos and photos during the day, there's really no complaints here. If it is bright outside, the photos generally turn out to be pretty good. We made a pit stop at Elmer's Bottle Tree Ranch. Would highly recommend stopping here for some photo opportunity if you're ever making the same road trip from LA towards Vegas and then the west of the Grand Canyon. One of the features that I like most about this phone is the ability to use it as a portable tripod. We're not actively walking around with a tripod stick, so if you're able to find any steady rock or table or any flat surface, you can just dock the phone on there and take a group pic. Super cool and convenient if you don't have a tripod with you. Some of the initial issues that we had with this phone is Android Auto may not always be supported. If you're renting a car and just looking to get the best prices, not necessarily have all the option. Sometimes Android Auto might not be supported. We end up just getting a 2019 Toyota Camry. For the most part, my friends have the iPhone and Apple Play seems to work instantly once you plug it in. But for Android Auto, unfortunately, there wasn't much support there. They told me to download some random app and it wasn't even available in the US, which is definitely a shame. You would think most cars these days would include both Android Auto and Apple Play together. Luckily, since it is such a big phone and you could unfold it into a tablet size, it actually fits nicely onto the dashboard. So that's the solution that I went with. And it does shift here and there, but for the most part, it works about 90% of the time and it gets the job done, really. I had the USB fast charging plugged in the whole time, but it was still barely charging, maybe because it is on full screen and also high refresh rate, so it was definitely charging very slow. That in combination with the full screen navigation, the Bluetooth music, probably driving through the desert with poor signal, the battery's probably getting drained constantly while trying to search for a signal as well. Next up is the Calico Ghost Town, Definitely a tourist trap here. You need to pay to get in, so FYI, if you ever stop by, you can't just drive by and take a look at it. It is kind of like a amusement park uh, type of thing. You need to pay the entrance fee in order to get into the actual town. Overall, the sign looks cool. Kind of remind you of the Hollywood sign. Not much to do here unless you want to do some ghost tour and light shopping. Gift shop is kind of neat. You get some unique flavors like pickle juice 
overall feels kind of vintage. Prices aren't terrible. Got some decent videos and photos here as well. After that, we hit up the abandoned water park along the desert. Plenty of photo opportunities here. We saw an open gate, so just pulled over and took some pictures. Looks like a lot of good looking graffiti here and a unique little pit stop. Just a little bit sketchy. After that, head back on a highway, saw some random fruit stand in the middle of the desert. Cost about 15 bucks, but super refreshing and worth every penny in the hot summer heat. Then we drove further along to the Seven Magic Mountains, basically a bunch of colorful rocks stacked up on top of each other in the middle of the desert. Another great photo opportunity is with a lot of tourists here. Just in general, this phone, when you're using it to take selfies, it can be a little bit heavy when you're lifting it in the air for too long. Point and shoot camera does the job so far, as you can see with all the videos and photos included in this video. When holding the phone, it can be a little bit sharp since I'm not using a case, I do have a deft grip on it. The edges can jab into your hand a little bit and feel uncomfortable if you hold it for too long. Snapchat quality is actually pretty decent. I know Android have a history of looking terrible on Snapchat, but can't complain too much here. Selfie camera is great. Food photos look decent as well. Wide angle camera is also excellent, so no surprises there. The phone itself is super useful, especially for long car rides. You can play games in the car, or if you're bored and you want to start recording the outside of the window, that works awesome as well. So here are some pictures from the Grand Canyon after finally making it there. First one, the phone is actually docked on top of a flat rock, and this is utilizing the flex mode. I set the timer on the phone, ran off to the bench, and took the picture. Pretty straightforward. The Galaxy Z Fold 3 have about five cameras on this phone. So there's a 10 megapixel selfie camera, the under display camera, mostly used for video calling and zooming. Quality on that one isn't great, so I don't even bother taking any pictures on there since it is only four megapixel. Then finally, I got the triple camera set up in the back, all 12 megapixels. There's a regular camera, an ultra wide camera, which is my favorite, and the telephoto lenses. After making a long drive to the Grand Canyon, we eventually made our way back to Huntington Beach in California. Here are some pictures from the beach. I really decided to play around with some of the camera features, such as hyperlapse and slow mo as well. Overall, pretty easy, straightforward to use. If you use Samsung phones before, it's pretty much the same software experience such as the Galaxy S21, S20, and the whole 9 yard. Samsung have gotten better with updating their software in recent years, so it is a pretty familiar experience. I know some people actually haven't received the Z Fold 3 yet, there's definitely a supply shortage. There's definitely common issues across the board, so hopefully you guys will eventually get to your hands on the Galaxy Z Fold 3 if you do plan to get one. Overall, this was a very fun phone to use during a vacation trip. It pretty much checked all the boxes in terms of what a high-end smartphone should be. It has a great camera, a pretty decent battery life. It is not the best compared to the iPhone 13 Pro, but it is solid enough to make it throughout the day. And if you want even better battery life, then just turn off the high refresh rate. Display is pretty awesome. It is literally a tablet that fits in your pocket and you can use it anytime you want. Doesn't get any much better than that and there are not many smartphones in the market that offer that and do it as well as Samsung does. I do like the flexibility, whether you're on an airplane, at an Airbnb or a hotel, and you just wanna kick back and relax, this is the perfect phone to do it. This has been another look at the Galaxy Z Fold 3. After bringing it on a long trip, I really do enjoy using it and I would recommend it if you can afford to shell out the $1,800. Let me know what your thoughts are on the Galaxy Z Fold 3. I know Samsung do offer great trade-in values as well, so there may be ways for you to finesse that and reduce the cost a little bit more. But I really did enjoy using this phone and it was a very unique experience. I actually went back to just using the Galaxy Z Flip 3 and also the iPhone 13 and it just wasn't the same experience this phone does definitely have something special but thank you for watching guys once again appreciate the continued support 
please like and subscribe and see you guys next time